Good evening, listeners. It's uh, two minutes uh, prior to the, or a priori, the hour of eight. And Ron, we're on uh, Triple R. Ron Hitler Brassy here. And I'm Humphrey B. Flaubert. We're from TISM. We're taking you through till 10 o'clock, and we're using the word a priori in a completely fallacious sense. Humphrey, it was wonderful, wasn't it, to have uh, two of the, the greats of contemporary rock, um, Bernard and John, uh, mm. drop mm. in. You know, uh, TISM, uh, we do hang around in those sort of circles. Uh, we've got a lot of friends in the rock industry, a lot of friends. And I think tonight, after tonight's show, our you know friendship uh, circle is going to become even wider. Mm. Um, Some people uh, think that Tism are, are merely a bunch of masked, um, semi-drunk and gigglers who who mm. uh, who mm. take cheap shots at uh, their fellow rock industry personalities. And I think we've proven them wrong in this first hour. I think so. I mean, uh, I think later on when we sit down with the program director of Triple mm. R yes. and very carefully analyse, uh, you know, go through the tapes. Mm. And with Bernard's lawyer and John's lawyer, both of yeah. who have called. I yeah. think that, uh, <clears throat> you know, they'll feel that we have correctly targeted the demographic. Um, you know, we, we've made the Triple R brand certainly have much more of a stronger yes. identity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's what we're here for, really. I, I think Neil's in trouble. And Neil is in trouble, yeah. Mm. I mean, I know no one around here likes him. I mean, he, he mm. gets the show because he's got a big record collection and everything. But uh, yeah. he's not a popular man. No, the halitosis, I think, makes it very difficult for him. Mm. Mm. Uh, but he has got a fantastically large penis. Mm. And, um, you know... You know, not that, that that matters or anything, but uh, I do think that helps him in the tight negotiation situation. Look, just before we get on to the next track, I think it's possible uh, on air now to appeal to Triple R management. We could make this a regular thing, mm. one, once every 18 years, because um, that that is the schedule. So in, in 2022, uh, I think Triple R <coughs> listeners uh, could tune in, and, and I think we could well be back here. Yeah, I think there's every chance. I mean, uh, and from here, who knows where? I think mm. it could lead to a... Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, uh, or a career um, in commercial radio. Mm. Um, well, many people sitting in these seats, of course, have taken the bucks, haven't they? Right, I mean, we've clearly. got Coulda Beans, we've got mm. the uh, Nova crew. Mm. Um, you know, Stephen Walker would have taken the bucks, but ain't no one offering. Mm. Yeah, and I think... Um, <clears throat> You know, you need to, Karen Leng, you need to have oh. a good hard look at yourself. Mm. I mean, you had the people from Sonic Youth in the studio again. Mm. Um, like, I think you need to get your stalking out of your system and um, just concentrate on the music, like we are tonight. You know, we're yeah. not taking cheap shots and no. bringing our own sort of sexual peccadilloes into right. this into this arena. Mm. We're here because of the music, and I, I think people understand and, that. And with Karen Ling, it's always restraining order this, restraining order that. With that. Don't come within 50 yards. Remember when the uh, the fellow from... Um, um, uh, what, what was his name? He's just made a little bit of a comeback. The Echo and the Bunnyman, he came mm. out. Who was the lead fellow there? Ian McCulloch. Oh, my goodness gracious. Mm. He was in the High Court like that. He'd got off the... He would hardly off Tala Tarmac before Karen had a restraining order slapped on, on her. <laughs> from memory but uh you I know think he's starting a band actually called uh, mcculloch's theory but i could be wrong anyway uh <coughs> this sort of um you know meandering conversation mm. I, I think uh is is obviously breaking new ground for this station mm. i mean you you never you never ever hear announcers crapping no. on and on no, and you, on you, and you on you can just on put it on. to 102.7 you know you're not going to hear any voices are you no it's all it's wall to wall 60s 70s golden oldies mm. here I think, uh, you know, some of the things we could uh, introduce to this program, which I really like in commercial radio, is the fact that they never back announce. They always uh, pre announce. You know, Ooh. it's coming up in the next hour. So I'd like to say, listeners, coming up in the next hour, uh, uh, an aeroplane is going to smash into the side of this building mm. and we're all going to die. Mm. What's and the also, uh, jet. Oh, my goodness. Well,. You mean a jet aeroplane, or no? I won't go there. What well, What's the theory there, Humphrey? Why do they uh, they fall? Why don't they back announce? Yes. Uh, well, I think uh, it's due to the massive intake of uh, of um, elephant juice. Uh -huh. um, you know that happens in their pro. From this. Hmm. And uh, complete loss of short-term memory. Mm. Um, well, we might try a bit of commercial radio later on. I think mm. um, mm. we've we've bought in our own personalised radio, and we're just going to hold it up to the mic, 
and we'll just see if we can get a commercial radio signal yeah. through the hallowed microphones of Triple R. Yeah, I think that'd be good. I mean, but, I think you know, the, and, the and people who are listening tonight, really, they, they, they want everyone else to, to, to think that they're listening to this show, but really they'd like to know what's going on on commercial and radio. I, it, Triple R listeners, I think for too long, they're, they're, they're sour grapes listeners. They want to drag everyone down to their level. You know, Triple R presenters have gone on to bigger, better things. They've got the bucks, they're getting the chicks, they've got the cocaine. You know, and it's time that Triple R listeners experience commercial radio through this microphone, through these airways, and I think, you know, they can see that commercial radio isn't the uh, capitalist and tropic force that they think it is. It's something that is acceptable, uh, palatable, you know, and uh, completely, um, completely in accordance with uh, hardcore leftist Maoist principles. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, the, the way the chap in Nickelback says... Yeah. Um, I like you with your pants around your feet and, um, um, you know, um, here's my glands penis. It's um, marvellous yeah. uh, imagery. Mm. You know, uh, as I've said on many occasions, uh, you know, he has a little known uh, disease with his uh, colon. Mm. Um, and you can tell that when he plays the guitar. Mm. It's a little like my dog. I took my dog to the park um, the other day and... Uh, and uh, she was unable to force out the final stool, and it, it reminded me. <laughs> uh, it's poo jokes. I'm sorry. Look, it's time to play a Tism song. This song has no reference to, uh, to, to poo in it. I know that's not going to silence our critics who think that's all we ever think about. But... Uh, well, uh, there's nothing I can do about that. Um, this is a song um, which is features some football guy, and we're playing at some football thing on Sunday called the Community Cup. It's all very good cause and stuff, and we're supposed to plug it, so that's what I'm doing. But really, I, I'm sick of life. So let's play a track. Ronnie Labarassi and Humphrey Beeple Bear here in Triple R. It's um, the Australian Music Hour. We just had Lobby Lloyd. And there's only eight minutes of Lobby left. Uh, we uh, we have a connection with Lobby Lloyd, of course. Lobby was one of our very first sound mixers. He was completely deaf at the time and only had one tooth. Um, whilst Lobby is playing in the background, uh, there is a very, very special person. Uh, um, I am slightly embarrassed because he keeps writing songs about us. But uh, he has actually given us a very, very, very special tape. Both Nick Cave and the Dirty Three are, of course, insulin dependent. We've uh, been backstage with uh, those people whilst um, they've been injecting the insulin. And uh, for an insulin dependent set of artists, this is one of their most marvellous achievements. Uh, one can talk about... Uh, 16th century Dutch painting and uh, the renaissance of uh, French provincial art in the late 1800s. Uh, one can talk about the new romantic movement uh, and um, the uh, response against industrialization in um, early uh, English uh, post-industrialist uh, uh, art and one can also talk about the Italian futurists and if one did talk about that one would just be raving. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Cave and the Dirty Three. <laughs> 